Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Tanisha. How's everybody doing on this wonderful Tuesday? It is Tuesday, right? Yes, it is Tuesday, July. <laughs> I had to double check, Shamika, July 25th. How's everybody doing? Tell me, what have you done uh, this week so far to move your business forward? Anybody want to share? Any promotions? Anything you've done? Stepping out of your comfort zone, showing consistency. Well, um, I did my first three-way call for one of my business partners, and she signed her up a couple of days later. So my business partner got her first business partner. That now, is awesome. Congratulations, Shamika. I mean, how was it being the expert on a three-way call? It was good. Uh, we had some learning moments, so... Um, we was able to, you know, debrief afterwards and I was able to, you know, kind of tighten up some areas, but she did, she did great. It was good. I love it. I love it. I love it. Key word that she said, debrief. A lot of people don't do that, but especially when you have a brand new business partner, um, it's really important to do a debrief after the three-way call. This is where you can make some tweaks and adjustments. You're also finding out if they were paying attention, asking them, you know, what they thought of the call and what they learned. That's very important. It's not that you have to do it on every call. By the time you do their fourth, fifth, sixth three-way call, you may not need to debrief, but I highly, highly recommend um, when you're first doing a three-way call for somebody or with somebody that you do a debrief. Very, very important to do that. Uh, let's see. All right, Denise says she's in Director Brown's Building Your Business on Social Media Workshop. How's that going, Denise? You learning anything good? You want to share anything that you've learned so far? Felicia, she did a travel showcase this Sunday, invited to the Blitz, and she will be signing up this week. Awesome. Congratulations, Felicia. I'm That's here. Denise. Director Brown, can you hear me? Ah, yes. Um, so we are learning to just reach out to people. So instead of waiting on people to reach out to us, we're learning how to just start the initial contact. Uh, we were working on like our flyers to promote our business as an agent and on planning marketing to separate flyers, um, paying attention to details because she gives us like three plays of the day and listen, watching, reading her details, information, watching her live to pay attention because she uh, expressed like how people will book, agents will book and they won't pay attention to like they'll just be rule for Jamaica and they might book their wrong rule mm -hmm. uh resort for the client. So paying attention to details, um, following directions, being coachable. So like in the beginning, some people within the first two days they got booted out. And because they had inboxed her and, and explained to her, she was willing to let them back in. So it's a learning process with mm -hmm. building up your team and building up your business. Excellent. I love that. I love that. So I love the fact that she's going over different things and um, teaching you both the IntelliTravel side and marketing side on how to build your business. So that's really, really good. Um, Martina says she has someone who reactivated after being inactive for a whole year. Martina, talk about it. What was the reason that they stopped the business and what was the reason that made them want to come back? I love to hear about the reactivations. And then the next question would be, what are you going to do with this new business partner new now that they reactivated? What are you going to do differently? Hey, Tanisha. So I'm not sure why she um, stopped her business in the first place, but she reached out to me back in January saying that um, she wanted to, you know, get back in, but she had to pay the fee mm -hmm. but but she's an ita only i've been trying when she was active i've been trying to get her started on the planet marketing side but she's ita only 
Okay, so Martina, when you have someone, and this is for everybody, if you have someone that reaches out to you and they want to reactivate, the first thing you need to do is to get them on the phone with your upline director. That's that's number one, um, because it's your upline director that's going to have the conversation with them to find out, well, why did you quit in the first place? Because if you don't address the reason or the cause for them to that made their business go inactive the same thing's going to happen again and not only that you want the reactivated person to have the vision the bigger vision of what this um opportunity can do as a whole chances are you may have led with travel which is why they were an ita only to begin with and so here they go coming back and it's probably going to be the same thing if you don't get them exposed to an upline director that can really ask the right questions. You know, what made you quit? What do you what is your why? Why are you coming back? Right? Because we don't want people to come back and repeat the same nonsense they did the last time. So as a sponsor, if you don't do something different, guess what's going to happen? The same thing that happened the first time. So you have an opportunity, Martina, to get it right this time and to present a different perspective of the business as a whole. And the first thing you need to do is leverage an upline director. Does that make sense, Martina? I hope that's helpful to you. Okay, great, 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 great. Um, and the other thing I, wanna, I want to catch, um, to, tap, to tap into Martina is I heard you say, I tried to, that's the problem. You tried to. You tried to get her to, right? You got to leverage. And this is why the training I did the last time was the power of the plugin on our one team, one dream meeting. And we discussed the power of the plugin. If your business partner does not plug in to the IMV basic training, the team meetings, it's just a matter of time before they fall off. It's just a matter of time. So you have to stress the importance of them plugging in to what it is they want out of the business, to whatever their goals are. Oh, your goal is to make an extra $500 a month? Okay, well, that's not going to happen if you do not plug into these trainings and these team meetings. You gotta, you gotta connect the two. All right, uh, let's see. Felicia says she had a bad three way call, but oh, Felicia, let's talk about it. You know, I want to hear about that one. You had a bad three way call, but she did say she learned what not to do. We need to talk about that. Okay, so it happened on the transition. Um, when I went to transition call for the three-way expert, the way that I was trained was to, you know, say that the you you know you told your director a little bit about the person they want to speak with the person, so that's what I did. And so I asked her, you know, would it be okay to bring her on? Uh, which we was don't weird. do that. I was <laughs> yeah, that's why I never about. asked permission to transition the call. Felicia, but that was how I was trained. I know you ain't learn that from me. No. And I know you ain't learned it from no. Mr. Moore. Because when he does the training no. on the PS3, he said, we don't ask permission to transfer the call over or to merge the call. We just do it. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's what went wrong. And so when I did the tra the transition. She just abruptly was like, no, I don't have time for that. I'm cooking. I'm going to have to talk to her later. Wow. So wait, was it a scheduled three-way call? Yes, ma'am. So she how she say if she didn't have time if she scheduled the call? I don't know. That That's what, one, I've never had anybody say no, so that threw me off. And then for her to say that she didn't have time when we agreed that I would follow up with her right after. Okay, so let me ask you this. When you called her, did you say, did you ask her what did she like best about what she saw? 
And on a scale of yeah. one to ten, what was her interest level in getting started? So I asked her what did she like best about what she saw, and she immediately said they should have um, showed more of the travel portion of it and not the pyramid part of it. That didn't answer the question. The question was, what did you like best? So how did you phrase the question? I said, hey, how are you doing, Ms. Sheila? What did you like best about what you saw on the presentation? And that was it. And she immediately said, they should have went over more about the travel portion and not the pyramid part of it. And what did you say? And I said, I said, well, you know, there are a lot of people who choose just to work the travel portion of it and not build a team. And I immediately went into, hey, you know, give me just a second and bring it on Director Allen. Okay. The first thing so I would Director say Allen, is pyramids are illegal because now you're allowing her to call your business a pyramid. That would have been the first thing I would have um, addressed with her. Um, it threw me off that she said no. So I, I was kind of like. <laughs> well, that's because you asked permission. Nobody's going to yeah. really, if you haven't even edified um, the expert, then why would they want to get on the phone with somebody, some random person? That's uncomfortable, right? So, yeah, there was a lot that went wrong, but I'm glad you said, you know, I learned what not to do. The way I transitioned uh -huh. the call, so I'm going to ask the person, you know, what did you like best about what you saw, you know, in the video? Get them to tell me what they like best, right? Clearly, she's more interested in the travel side, which is why she responded the way she did. And then it would have been, you know, on a scale of one to 10, what's your interest level in getting started? And then it's, I'm sure you have some questions. What I would love to do is introduce you to my senior business partner, you know, Jessica Allen. She is a two-star director in Planet Marketing. This young lady books a ton of travel. So she's going to be able to answer any questions that you have. I know she keeps a really busy schedule, but hold on one second. Let me see if I can get just 10 minutes of her time because you have got to hear her story. Notice there was gotcha. no, you're, I'm not asking permission, right? It's And it was flawless. Go back and watch the Jappy 2.0 training. And I would also suggest watching the, um, um, this will help you for future as you learn to become the expert on a three-way call. Um, there's a training video called How to Be the Expert on a Three-Way Call on my YouTube channel. But yeah, never ask permission uh, to put them on the phone with your upline. You y'all gotta learn how to finesse your words. That's all it is. You just gotta finesse the words. And if you do a really good job of edifying the expert, they will want to talk to them because you're letting them know. Look, this person's been in the business longer than me. They're documented, um, and they're gonna really be able to answer your questions. Especially you're saying that you know you have an interest in the travel side well guess what this person books a lot of travel so they're going to be able to answer your questions way better than i can and that's it does that make sense felicia yep yep it makes a lot of sense absolutely so yeah good i just kind of felt a certain type of way i was like i was a little offended <laughs> it's not like a we both thing. work for the but you know we both work for the district attorney i wouldn't refer you to something that's illegal i wouldn't be involved in something that's illegal Right, but see, you didn't. That wasn't part of your response, so you got her thinking it is a pyramid. <laughs> you should have shut that right, down right. immediately. Well, that yep, yep, yep. But it's all good. Here's why I love situations like this because we never lose, we learn. Right, and what was one of the first things Felicia says? I learned what not to do, and that's it. I bet you this a call like this will never, ever, ever happen again. But it's like, we all have to go through, you gotta be bad before you can get good. You gotta be good before you can become great. So it's it's a good learning experience. Thank you so much for sharing that. Ms. Zara, I saw your hand up. Okay, uh, yes, I had a question because um, in some of the trainings that I heard um, Director Moore do, um, he tells them like, he's talking to the prospects and he'll say, um, hold on for a minute. And you don't actually tell them that you're that you're trying that you're going um, to your three way call. And so then when I get on my three way call, 
then I introduced, but then also like now I'm hearing him say, you need to edify your prospect before you get on the three-way call. But I've heard him talk about that before too. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you speak to that? Yeah, and every director is different. There are some directors, Mr. Moore is one of those directors who he wants you to edify before you get him on the line. He don't need to hear his own edification, right? And that's fine. It depends on all how you lead into it. Me, I want to hear you edify. I'd rather you edify once I get on. Why do I say that? Well, I'm a trainer at heart. How can I even tell if you're doing the edification the right way if I never hear you say it? And some people don't transition the call right. And then it's just all of a sudden, boom, your prospect is on with your expert and you don't know what was said, what was not said. It's very awkward because y'all ain't doing the proper introduction. And it's just like, okay, uh, Director Burke, I have Samantha on the line. And I'm like, oh, hi, Samantha. Like, I don't know what you said, what you didn't say, especially if you're new, right? Um, so, it really depends how you are transitioning the call. I like to, I teach to just give a little bit of the edification before I get on. So let's say um, I'm, my prospect is Shamika and Kevin Eke is gonna do the three-way call, right? So I may say to Shamika, I'm gonna ask her, what did you like best about what you saw on a scale of one to 10? What's your interest level, right? And she might say, oh, I love the fact that, you know, I could do this from home and have more time with my kids. I'm gonna say, that's awesome. That's one of the reasons why I got started is because of the flexibility. And I'm gonna say, listen, Shamika, I'm sure you have some questions, but what I would love to do is introduce you to my senior business partner, um, Kevin Ikea. You know, she is a DIT in the company. That means she's leading a team of over 50 people. Um, you know, she works both sides of this business. Hold on, let me see if I can get just a few minutes of her time um, because I really want you to hear her story. And then I'm gonna put it on hold, right? I'm calling Kevin Ikea. I'm saying, Kevin Ikea, listen, I got Shamika Long on the line. You know, she's a single mom. Um, she loved the fact that she could do this from home so she could spend more time with her kids. And on a scale of one to 10, she's an eight. Then I'm going to merge the call. Now I'm going to go into Kevin Ikea's full edification. You know, Shabika, um, I want to introduce you to my senior business partner, Kevin Ikea. Listen, she is a director in training with our company. This She loves to help people. She loves to have fun. She knows 100% of the facts about this opportunity. So she's going to be able to answer any additional questions that you have. And Kevin Ikea, this is Shamika. And then I'm going on mute. So notice I gave up just a piece of the edification before I merge the call because I want Shamika to know I'm about to put her on the phone with someone who's, you know, successful in the business and document it. And then once I merge it, then I'll go into the full edification. So does that answer your question? Um, yes, that does. Um, thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Karen? Did we lose Karen? Karen, you had your hand up? Yes, okay, yes. I um, was just going to give a, a suggestion to the caller right before mm -hmm. this caller uh, that had the bad three-way, she said, but she mm -hmm. learned from it, excellent. I would just like to suggest that she watch the this um, what we're on now, the Thursday one, where you talked about the colors and edifying the colors. Mm -hmm. That would be a good resource mm -hmm. for the transition, you know, you know, knowing how to, you know, say all of that about the person Absolutely. according also with it. So that was all I was going to suggest. Okay, that was good. It's That's been good. helpful. It's been helpful to me and my and our team here in Detroit. So Excellent. I'm always trying to pass it on. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Karen, for sharing that. Miss Lorna, how you doing? I'm fine. So I spent my weekend just thinking things over. Um, I'm about to lose my second BP and I'm only a bronze builder. Mm -hmm. So it kind of hits me in the gut a little bit. Mm -hmm. But um, my BP says it's a conflict because she does work with the airline. 
mm -hmm. she's getting a promotion. So she has to pull out. That's out, so that's, that's out of your, that's not, that's out of your control. I was wondering what's the best way to graciously tell her, you know, see you later. I don't want to sound like, you know, I'm Congratulations sorry, on your promotion. And if, you know, if your position changes, you know, I look forward to having you come back. Okay. I mean, you can't do it. If it's a conflict of interest, it's a conflict of interest. There's nothing you yes. can do about that. So, right. Right. You know? But, um, yeah, it is what it is. There's nothing really you can do about that. Just wish her well, congratulate okay. her, uh, ask for a referral, say, hey, if you know of anybody who's looking to earn some extra income, you know, please refer them to me. If you're planning yes. a trip, allow me to book your travel. Same thing that I do in the Japanese and, uh, training. So, yes. Would you say, Lorna? Uh, it's my friend, so I know that she'll still be in my corner. Oh, there you go. Yeah, but ask her for those referrals. Yes. Good, good. Miss Karen? Okay, I did have a, a question. I forgot that I did have another question. So um, some of my team, we did uh, a booth over this weekend. Um, and we had people, we gave away a, a free trip. That was the, the, the lure them to, it was at a natural hair show expo. Mm -hmm. And we said, win a free trip. And people came over, we had them fill out the, the form, uh, the customer profile form, you know, mm -hmm. just the top part, unless they really were planning some travel. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just wanted to give, you know, I was kind of giving uh, them, uh, so, okay, we, we did it Saturday. So I said, let's not worry about Sunday. Give them time to warm day. And then Monday, let's give give them a call and say, okay, the ones we gave away three trips. So the three trips winners, we gave told, called them, told them. But the ones that didn't win, we were saying that, um, you know, you didn't win the trip, but we did talk because we talked and had rapport. We started rapport. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I was saying that that was and I'm just checking this over with you, uh, Director Burke, to make sure we're doing it right. Um, that was the peak of talking to them at the booth. So there was no need to send the two videos or videos or, or the peak videos, because we already peaked, we already established a poor, because we talked to them, we made notes on the back of their thing, of what they were interested in, who they are, and, and, and their need and all that stuff. And then Colin said, well, okay, so we do have, um, you know, we wanted to continue our conversation. It was great meeting you and la la la. And then what we were also, um, we do have a, a you know, another opportunity for you to win trips is you can refer if you have any referrals, you know, if you, cause we gave some P cards, you know, so did you, and we wrote that, if, did you get a chance to look at the P card on the QI code? If not, you know, if you do want some more information, let's, let me just send that to you now. And then if you know other people that wanted like maybe three or four, I told them they choose whatever number, and we, we can have it like a referral program and then we can give chips there if they actually see the program. Okay, so, so what here's you... my first question. Were okay. you at this event as an IntelliTravel travel advisor or as a planet marketing representative? Well, since we were talking about giving away a trip, it was the travel advisor. So what 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 did you have on your table? Did you have something that, said in teletravel did you have something that said planet marketing like what was actually, well, actually at this table no we just had uh, it was a hawaiian theme because one of the other business partners she kind of had set it up already we just came over there and did the the setup we did she was a hawaiian thing we just had lays and um different de decorations we had a a backdrop with a, a tiki hut and things like that. It was just more vacation and that, cause that was the theme, come win a vacation. So were you a there to getaway. get more travel clients? Well, actually we not really. I mean, we were really, the main thing was because everything on focus on our is to build our team. And this was a way to build our team. So were we out of compliance? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I kind of figured. Very much. I mean, so. we did. Yeah, because we we talked about the vacation. Yeah. So what should we have just stuck with the vacation? Because we we were just listening to their needs, and then when we did the phone call, is when we talked about them. You know, seeing so, the presentation. I I guess. 
I mean, so if you're there, when I think lays and all of that, it's like, okay, you're you're representing in teletravel, in which case all you could do is sell travel and talk about booking their travel. So mm-hmm. that would have need, needed to be the entire conversation. Do they have any upcoming trips? You know, maybe you have a group trip or a couple of different group trips that you already have set up where you can mm-hmm. hand out information. So if anybody's interested in that trip, um, you know, maybe you have a group cruise set up as well as a group land trip um, and give people the opportunity to book there or to find out if they have any upcoming trips that they are planning. Um, but it would have to be all about promoting your travel agency. So you should have your travel agent business cards there that you're handing out to people. And then, using and the moment you're using the client information form that's definitely in teletravel right that's not oh, right exactly planet marketing so it's right. you know having them fill out and asking them you know where are you planning to go next now once you call them um at that point if you wanted to peek them and say okay you know i, I you know it was nice meeting you you know you shared that you were interested in going to you know, Paris or whatever, I would love to provide you with a quote. Do you have your dates? You know, blah, 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 blah. And then after mm-hmm. that, if you said, you know, if I could show you a way to make money and save money on this trip to Paris, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? They're either going to say yes or no. If they say no, you, you're just going to go forward with providing the quote for the trip. Gotcha. At the actual event, you can't play both sides of the fence. Okay. It's either one or the other. You have to make a decision if you're going to do an event, are you going to be wearing your IntelliTravel hat or are you going to be wearing your Planet Marketing hat? Two different hats and you can't mix them. No mixing. Got it. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So I encourage you to definitely go back um, to the IntelliTravel website and watch that um, compliance video. Mm -hmm. Um, because they're very clear there on what you can and cannot do when it comes to marketing this business. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Danette? Good afternoon, Director Burke. Um, I was excited to have two business partners um, recently, one on Saturday and one yesterday. Congratulations on your new business partners. Thank you. Those two would have taken us to 2020. However, we had some credit holds, mm-hmm. and I, if you wouldn't mind addressing like how you would address the person when you call them to rectify the credit holds. Mm-hmm. So when I first um, have a credit hold, I always assume they don't know they're on credit hold. Is <laughs> number one, um, and what I've started sending was messages basically saying, "Hey." Not sure if you're aware, but you know, you're know you on credit hold. And right now we're focusing on hitting our monthly team goal. So you need to just log into whatever side of the business is on credit hold and update your payment information. And then I say, if you, if you have any issues, let me know. That's all I do. But you got to kind of find, you. you know, kind of, you want to know why they are on credit hold. Some people, they just have an expired credit card and they just didn't know. And it's very, very important to make sure um, that they're update. If they are changing their payment information, they need to update both sides. Some people end up updating the IntelliTravel side, thinking that it's automatically going to update the Planet Marketing side, and it doesn't. Um, so it's very important to make sure that they update both sides. Another thing too, with credit holds, sometimes it's just their payment date is just not convenient for them. Um, when people go on credit hold with planet marketing, I always let them know about being able to pay it in full for the whole year. Because they'll save, you know, I think a little over 40 bucks if they pay it up front, that one ninety one fifty two. Sometimes they don't even know that that's an option. So I show them where they can do that and pay that side up front. So now they're only having to really, you know, worry about the $5 for the mobile app and the $39.95 um, for the planet, for the IntelliTravel side. 
Um, or I, if that date is inconvenient, you know, you can email Planet Marketing and ask them if they can change your date for the marketing side. With the IntelliTravel side, you can log in yourself and change your payment date. Um, it's so not good to have a payment date at the end of the month. That's like the worst time for almost everyone. So I usually try to encourage people, um, you know, maybe around the second week, somewhere around the 15th um, to change their payment date. This way, if something happens financially, guess what? They got two weeks to make that payment um, before it affects your money. Does that make sense, Danette? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Divorce? Yeah, so I think, you, are you got, were you going over what the cost is for the week or something like that? I'm sorry, I got on a little bit late. I just want to make sure I'm on the right. Say that again. Right now so, we're talking about credit holds. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I was okay. asking people, you know, how, what did you do to move your business forward this week or anything we could celebrate? Okay, so yeah, that's what I was speaking to. I got a new business partner yesterday. Congratulations. Good job. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And so that's exciting. And then one of my business partners who um, I'm excited that she was saying that she wasn't going to go to convention, is going to convention, so I'm pretty excited about that. That's a big deal, Devoris. Congratulations. Yes, I appreciate that. Awesome. that. Thank you. Yes, because that's going to be life changing for her to attend. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Shout out to Ebony who hit Bronze Builder this morning. Wait, where my yes fix? Yes. Congratulations, Ebony. Good job. Good job. That's what Thank you. Up. Thank you. Thank you. I'm proud of you. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, Sharice. I was going to say what I've been doing uh, in my business is reaching down, letting them know the, <clears throat> the importance of attending the meetings mm -hmm. because there is helpful to pass down the information, but it's better when they hear for themselves. So I was really uh, as, um, excited. I had about five business partners to attend the Dallas uh, meeting nice. and I have about I seven going to convention. So um, I'm 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 looking for that duplication in the bit in the um, in my downline. So that's good. That's good. Good job. Good job. Rochelle has a three way call set up for this afternoon. Excellent, Rochelle. Who's who's doing the call for you? I did it with my upline because I went and started reaching out to several people. I know, and but who? Not find nobody. Who's doing the three way call? Oh, just my. You said upline. That's not a person. Um, Who? Oh, Director Lapsy. Okay. Director Tanya Lapsy. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, let me look in the chat here. Amira's on her way to being a dream maker certified. She finished her lessons. She did the final exam yesterday. Yep, she has all of her webinars done. Excellent. So she's just waiting for the class. So congratulations, Amira, on getting that done. That's what's up. That's my new business partner. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. And she's mastered the transition for her business launch. So that's good. That's good. All right, let's see. Just seeing if there's any other questions. Any any other questions or anything anybody wants to celebrate? All right. So hey Tanisha. Yes. Hey, so it's Kevin Nikia. I have a question. I think I know the answer, but I'm not sure. Okay. Um, so I have a married couple. Mm -hmm. And uh, one person is working the marketing side and the mm -hmm. other is working the ITA side, but technically, you know, they kind of working together, but that's how it looks on paper. Mm -hmm. Well, they purchased the app. And if I'm understanding this correctly, Planet Marketing is a, uh, it can be, of course, for, uh, 
a two parent, a two partner person partnership, they can only have their one app, correct? Because he correct. tried to purchase the app and it's not working. And I was like, oh, I don't think that's going to work because it's for one single account, right? Right. So they he would just have to log in using the same username and password as the wife. The only issue with that, it, uh, doing it that way is there's no way to determine who added the lead. Uh, <laughs> so they got to They just got to be able to communicate with each other. You know, maybe you definitely use the note section, you know, so that the husband can say, okay, this is my lead or this is her, you know, this is the wife's lead, but yeah, only one app. Okay. So, mm -hmm. one, okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Tunisia. You're welcome. You're welcome. Debbie Jones got a new BP and her new BP got her first BP. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Debbie, congratulations. How does it feel to get that going? That's what I'm talking about. It feels very um, exciting and, and uh, very motivating. Very good. motivating. Good, yeah. good. All you got to do is stay consistent and then you can have more of that. That's right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So any other, anybody have anything else they want to um, oh, celebrate? Director, Director Burke. Yes. Question. My BP who I'm losing, she has a BP. What's going to happen to that BP? Nothing. She just needs to reach oh, out okay. to you. Nothing oh, okay. Happens. Yeah, she still has this. You're seeing the about that director, before. Okay. Director, you're still going to be there to support her. She still needs to plug in. Nothing changes. It's just that nobody gets um, okay. the 10% override because her sponsor will be gone. So that's going to be right. Mm -hmm. The matrix is all messed up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sharice, you are funny. You like my ass? Um, Daft Boy. I don't know. Some website. This is where my brother got it from. <laughs> All right. So training topic today. We only got 15 minutes. I don't know if I can get through all of this in 15 minutes. Maybe I should just save it for Thursday. Anybody have any questions maybe we should just make this a q a for today and i can start the training topic. i have one more i agree okay that's what well we're... i have one other thing to share let me just see if i can yes. get it out real quick if everybody can see this i have my p 2020 pen congratulations sharice that's what's up thank you I love it. So, so let's talk about that. That's a big deal. 2020, once you hit gold builder and you personally enroll nine people, your next goal is to go 2020. That is the road to directorship because it's at the point where you have a team of 20 people direct that you, you gotta have a couple people who wanna also go for the bag. They want directorship too. They wanna secure that legacy. So now it's not you trying to build a team of 100 by yourself. You should have, you know, at least three people that are duplicating what you're doing as well. Um, so Sharice, have you, now that you have 20 directs, have you, can you say that you have at least three people that also are going for a directorship with you? I, so to be honest with you, I think that I have a, a, a lot of my, um, uh, business partners are analytical thinkers. And so um, the process has been slow, but this year I uh, committed, I used the topic of going broke, pretty much investing into all of the meetings, right? So by me attending the meetings, I passed that motivation down and let them know. So that's why I've been seeing my team coming to meetings and being plugged in. So I will see that the seeds that I planted, I will see those seeds being harvested yeah. sometime this year. So that's where that duplication is coming in at because I, the, and I'm just going to be frank. Um, it wasn't this network business is relationship. 
And so uh, it was missing. So I built a relationship within, you know, even being plugged in here and other uh, opportunities. And I just let them know that in order for you to grow, you would need, it's honest, like you really need to be plugged in, build a relationship so that you can have uh, people available. You can't expect leadership to be there for you when you're not there listening to them. They don't know your face. They don't know your name. They don't even know who you are. And so we can't pity on the things that we're looking for other people to do that we're not doing for ourselves. So I'm, um, that's how I'm explaining it to the team. I keep it very real. And I'm letting them know if all of us are going, you know, just think about if you're going to fight, if you have more people with you to fight, it's okay if you miss a swing. It's okay if you uh not the strongest person to win that fight. But if you come together, it's more script. So if all of us coming together to support you on those PBRs, on those three ways, then don't worry about what you're doing wrong because we're going to be there for you. Mm -hmm. and so that's how I pass it down to my team. I love it. I love it. That is, I mean, everything you're saying is correct. And here's the thing. Once you, once they show up to these meetings, now you're leveraging the other leaders and now they get to be poured in from the top income earners and other leaders. And something that someone says is going to click with them and it's going to make all the difference. It's going to change their mindset, their perspective on their business. They're going to be excited about their business. Yeah, until people really go to a live event, they're not excited. <laughs> but I promise you, once they leave a meeting or any type of live event, they are excited and pumped up and ready to do their that the business. And it it's something that you just can't communicate to them on a phone call, a conversation. They have to experience it for themselves. Um, and so, Sharice, these people that are going to the meetings, they're also going to a convention. Some of them, hopefully. I have, um, so three out of the um, five from yesterday that was in attending, they're going to convention. And the rest of them, uh, they live uh, in other states, but they'll be there as well. And mm -hmm. one thing that um, Mr. Bradley uh, indicated, he said, if wide is for show, deep is for dough. So that lets me know that it doesn't matter how many people you have on your team. You, you need to go deep in order for, for you to get the, uh, the income that you deserve. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if I have a hundred people, but if, if it's not being duplicated, then you right. will not really get into your money. Right. And the takeaway is uh, a mother cannot have grandkids. So that means you have to share the business for them to be able to share the business. So let's keep going. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, go, going wide. Yeah. You, you're going to get those, you know, the 50% check matches, but what you're losing um, in addition to what Mr. Bradley said is the stability, right? Because a leg is not a leg unless it's four levels deep. So yeah, you need that duplication so that that leg will be sustainable. Cause guess what? If you just enroll one person and they quit, that leg is gone, <laughs> right? But if you enroll someone who enrolls someone who enrolls someone who enrolls someone and someone quits in that leg, it's still a leg, right? Cause you got other people that are duplicating and that's how you build a sustainable uh, business. It's, it's just so important, so important. So that's good. And I would encourage for anybody who, let's say you have some people who can't make it to convention for whatever reason, get them to register for the boot camp in September. Okay, you can't make that, then make this. Right, but don't let them off the hook. They Everybody in the company right now should be registered for some type of an event. Just can't, Just because you can't make convention, that's no excuse. We got other things going on. How about your weekly meeting? If there's not one in your area, what about one that you can drive to? You registered for that? Are you registered for the next Super Saturday or Super Sunday in your area? Are you registered for Seven Figure Success School um, coming up? Are you registered for boot camp? What are you registered for if you are not registered for a convention and can't make it for whatever reason? So make sure you're holding your team accountable. 
right? Because they said they wanted to make this money and they wanted this and they wanted that. Okay, so what are you doing? What? How are you investing back into your business if you're not showing up? Right? Any other questions? We got seven minutes. So this is just basically Q&A with Tanisha. <laughs> Go ahead, ask me anything. I'm going to check. Uh, hey, it's Tanisha. It's Kevin Eke again. Yes, ma'am. I have a library um, currently going over for the second time. Go for no. Mm -hmm. What book, um, and I probably have this, what book would you recommend for Mindship? I feel like um, a lot of times we talk about shifting your mindset and I do believe um in the whole trickle down effect and showing up for your business I am looking to do some really great things here in the future but I know that um you talk a lot about having that poverty mindset I don't think I have a poverty mindset but I do still think that a lot of things that I was unable to attain in the past remind me of where I am right now so what book would you recommend for mm -hmm. someone who is because here's the thing I really kind of feel like it's one of those things that where you can you have to continue to work on I don't yeah. feel like it's one of those things that you know you like a light switch you click off and click on yep um what do you recommend as far as a book or if you have more than yes. one I'm more than available to take yes. out so the first one is this one okay I have that one yep <clears throat> the other one I think I have it in my other bookcase is Think and Grow Rich. And that was one that was um, that, I mean, we've done that book over and over, but Think and Grow Rich is another one. And mm -hmm. make sure you tune into uh, our virtual coffee break on Thursday, because the topic that I was going to talk about today is about having an abundance mindset. So it would have been perfect. <laughs> yes. So I, we'll have that discussion on Thursday and that will help you as well. And there'll be some tips that I share there. But definitely for, for me, I mean, think, think and Grow Rich is the bomb.com. I don't know, but it was something about the top 10 distinctions between millionaires and the middle class that was very impactful for me. And it was the smaller of the books to read. I, I, it's just it was just what I needed at that time during the season to really help me make that shift um, mm -hmm. in my mind. Um, and I, I, like I said, almost daily, even when I'm doing um, three-way calls, um, you know, I reference that book a lot. Okay. So definitely that one in Think and Grow Rich. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Director Burks, I have a question. Yes. So, um, um, Mr. Um, Dylan Brady mentioned about um, he doesn't sell the marketing piece. He doesn't sell the travel piece. He sells the dream. Absolutely. How would you be able to share a dream without living that dream? Great question. In order to sell the dream, you got to know what the nightmare is. Right? So it's about asking the right questions. And this is why we say build rapport, find the need and meet it, find the hurt and heal it, find the problem and solve it. If you can identify someone's nightmare, then you can sell them their dream. So Sharice, if I know that, you know, you're married, your husband's working two jobs, you work in two jobs, y'all barely see each other. You ain't traveling because y'all just struggling to make ends meet. I know what your nightmare is, right? I just described it, right? So I'm going to go to you. I'm going to say, hey, Sharice, listen, I know, you know, you and hubby between the two of y'all, y'all working four jobs. Well, guess what? Four jobs are for four people. No one should have to work four jobs. If I could show you a way where you and your husband can earn some extra income from home, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? A look at? So you don't necessarily need to be the evidence of any of the uh, nightmares. No, why would I need to be the evidence of it? I just, here's the thing, Sharice, it's not about you. Don't nobody care. It's about them. And I think mm -hmm. that's where a lot of people keep making the mistake is they keep making everything about them. 
oh, I can't talk to anybody. I'm not open to sharing this business with anybody because I haven't completed my dream makers and my vacation builders. I don't know what I'm doing yet. So I ain't, it ain't about you. You slow with learning. Guess what? The person that you really want to talk to would have done it all quickly. You slowing them down because you slow. It ain't about you. You know, there's people I have enrolled in the business on a Monday and we may have scheduled their orientation uh, for Thursday, let's say. And by the time I get on the phone with them Thursday, oh, I've already read the training manual. I already did the online academy. I, I'm already signed up for the dream. They wasn't waiting on me. They took off. Because guess what? They got two emails from IntelliTravel telling them what to do. They didn't need to wait for me on Thursday to tell them what they needed to do. They went and did it. So don't nobody care what Sharice went to went through or what Lorna went through or what Debbie went. No, no, nobody care. You got to make it about them. It doesn't make sense for us to have to go through everybody's woe is me and challenges in order to be able to help them. Like I said, if I know you and your husband between the two of y'all, y'all working four jobs. Sharice, if I could show you a way where you and your hubby can make some income from home so y'all can quit your second jobs and spend more time with each other, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? I'm just asking you to look. You ain't gonna say, well, Tanisha, that depends. Like, have you ever worked two jobs before? Do you care? No, you don't care. I'm talking about you, not me. So again, that's that mind shift change that people need to make, stop making it about you. Nobody cares what you accomplished or didn't accomplish in this business, how much money you made or didn't make. It's about helping them. People have real problems and issues right now, right? So Sharice, if, if, if you are on fire, literally, you are on fire. And I say, Sharice, would you like this bottle of water? Are you gonna say, well, that depends. Have you ever been on fire, Tanisha? I, I don't know. Does that water thing work? Have you been on fire? Did the water work for you? I don't, uh, you gonna be like, girl, give me that bottle of water. Right? Does that make sense? I know I went a little extreme with that example, but y'all get it, right? Yes, we got it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Anybody else? I know it's one o'clock, but I want to make sure we get all the questions answered. Was that helpful for everyone? Any other questions? All right. So again, on Thursday, we're going to talk about having an abundance mindset. And why is that so important? Because you attract who you are. So if you are someone with a scarcity mindset, you ain't attracting the people who want an abundant mindset. They ain't hungry. They don't want nothing. So we got to fix that with us first so that we can attract the right people. So come back on Thursday at noon, Eastern Standard Time. And everyone have an amazing, amazing night. Don't forget the team Zoom with Mr. Moore tonight at 10 p.m. See ya. Bye everyone.